the survival of the northern red rhino is down to only two females, which are non-fertile. So actually they're doomed for extinction if nothing is done. So now tell us about this whole process. How long was it in the planning? What did it take to get to this point? Um, it actually did not come out of the blue. It's a long-term project. We have been working on this for more than 10 years uh, intensively. First of all, we needed to collect eggs for making embryos in the first place. So we did more than 80 procedures to, to collect eggs and create embryos. We have now 66 embryos created, 30 of which are from the northern white rhino. And they are waiting safely on ice for their big day. Um, and yeah, it took us 16 procedures at all to, to create the first viable embryo we can even transfer. And we did also 13 transfers until now and had some partial successes, some early pregnancies, which failed to to go on further, which is not so uncommon in mammals. And now for, for the first time, it's it's quite mind blowing to think that all these nights, uh, yeah, driving through the whole of Europe after days of preparation and to collect, coming back home with a few little cells, the eggs of a rhino, that this can really lead to bring back life and the several ton huge and beautiful animal on the planet and maybe even to bring back a species or a subspecies yeah, it is absolutely remarkable. So explain to us if there were only two infertile northern white rhinos left, how did you gather these eggs? Um, so we, we, we are working closely with the, um, with the sub, other subspecies, the southern white rhino. So this is where we learned how to create viable embryos. And then now we have also from the younger of the two living northern white rhinos, we have so far collected many oocytes and created 30 viable uh, embryos that are stored on ice. <clears throat> so this is, uh, yeah. Amazing. All that is left and luckily my colleagues were so so thoughtful to about 20 years ago try to preserve semen of then still living northern white rhino males. Otherwise we would never be able to create embryos of them now. Goodness, and what is, wh what is, where is the semen been all this time? It's in our cryobank next door to where I am now. That is just extraordinary. How difficult is it, you know, I, I know there's so many people that might be watching us tonight that have gone through IV, IVF procedures themselves and it's, it's tricky and it's not always successful. So how complicated is it in an animal this size? Yeah, so as you mentioned, the main obstacle is apparently the size and the ovaries and the uterus are quite far inside of the animal. So one and a half meters we need to cover and it has a very thick skin. So the, the best and only approach we found so far is, is to go by the rectum. So we are actually puncturing, puncturing a needle through the rectal wall, which is to my knowledge, the only species this has ever been done in successfully. That's incredible. If it's if you're using the subspecies, the southern white rhino, um, what would this new species be like going forward? It wouldn't be a pure northern white, would it? It would be a pure northern white uh, rhino embryo because we have, yeah, as I said, collected oocytes from Fatu, from one of the two left uh, okay. northern white rhinos on the planet. And we have fertilized them with the sperm that was prior preserved uh, many years ago. And this actually leads to pure northern white rhino embryos. And since there was a hybrid once of northern and southern white rhinos by mating in some zoo setting, um, it, we, we are very confident that from the reproductive aspects of a gestation, they, these two subspecies are still compatible enough to, to have a southern white rhino female carry to term a northern white rhino embryo and fetus. So we are very hopeful this will work. Yeah. And the, yeah, the, the genetics of the offspring will be purely northern white rhino. That's and we really want them to meet still the last two of their kind and to exchange social knowledge. So we will do this in Kenya where the last two northern white rhinos are based and uh, then they will be introduced to uh, Nain and Fatu. Yeah, which it would just be quite the remarkable day. It, you've talked about how unusual this is to do with a, a rhinoceros. Uh, are there other species that you might be able to work with after this? Uh, yes, indeed. There's unfortunately we are going to through quite uh, extensive mass extinction at the moment. 
And for example, there's some other critically endangered rhino species, the Sumatran rhino, and we have already started to work with them and uh, had some early successes also applying our technologies to Sumatran rhinos. And uh, on, in the long run, there will be also maybe a need to work with the Javan rhinoceros. Yeah. Once you know you have some success and we have young baby northern white rhinos being born, it's still a very fragile situation to try and get them to a point where they are a stable species, I would imagine. Yes, indeed. Uh, you, we only have two bowls, a uh, sperm of two bowls that we can use for fertilization of the eggs. We can harvest only from one of the females because the older one is too old for this approach. Uh, therefore, the genetics are quite limited, but uh, we have luckily very dedicated colleagues working on the stem cell front, and we have more than 12 cell lines cryopreserved of northern white rhinos that are not living anymore. But still, with this, they can be reprogrammed to stem cells, and from the stem cells, we can, in the petri dish, create uh, oocytes and sperm. So we can generate in vitro. Uh, embryos and they can yeah actually in the we have the option to to cross them uh, optimally for generating the most genetic diversity of the next generation that is just remarkable <laughs> well uh, congratulations very exciting um, i'm sure lots of people will be interested to watch it as it progresses um, and let's hope there's a little baby northern white very very soon thank you very much